Hello and uh, welcome everyone. We have completed uh, most of our uh, chapters in uh, understanding the prophetic, the APC publication. There are a couple of chapters remaining. Um, the content of which we have addressed in many of the questions that came up during our study. However, we will go through these chapters and uh, I am going to put across some of the highlights from these chapters. So we will do chapters 12 through chapter 17. Um, so chapter 12 talks about ministering prophetically. There are different levels of the prophetic ministry. We have spoken about this and uh, all believers can prophesy, all believers can pursue a prophetic ministry. However, not all believers are called into the office of a prophet. Uh, we must understand this. One of the mistakes that can happen if we do not um, recognize that there are these levels and that as believers we must press into the higher levels is that we may tend to uh, call ourselves a prophet when the prophetic gift manifests. However, we know that uh, that particular term is used for someone who has the governmental authority and called into the office of a prophet. So not all prophesying believers are prophets uh, and we must recognize this. While ministering, there can be opportunities that we receive to minister prophetically to a congregation. And when we are doing this, there are a couple of questions for us to ask so that we are able to minister in an appropriate way. These questions would be, who is this message for? Sometimes the message could be for the entire congregation or it could also be for a couple of a people or a group in a congregation. And so we need to know the audience for the message. The second question is, when should they be told? Should they be told right away or should this be brought to them at a later point in time? This is another question for us to ask. Uh, the third question is, if it is all right to speak the message publicly or if there is a requirement to meet the individuals personally and deliver the message. We can also ask a fourth question, which would be, should it first be presented to the leader of the church or have they given me the liberty and trust to deliver it publicly? So uh, while ministering in a, another congregation, this is something to be very, very mindful about uh, because we do not want to um, disregard the authority that God has already set upon uh, that group of people. Now, another manner in which the prophetic word generally tends to be released in a service setting or a church service um, a setting is when people are called out publicly and a word that they that a word that has been received about them is spoken to them. While this is uh, and can be a good thing at times to gain the attention of the person, uh, we must keep in mind that as a minister, we need to be sensitive and we mustn't end up embarrassing people. Or um, if the word has to do with uh, correction or um, pointing out a sin, then, you know, people may end up being humiliated in public. And uh, these are not things that we want to do because we've already understood uh, that 1 Corinthians 14, three states that this, the prophetic word is generally a word which is given to us for the edifying, the exhorting and comforting of people. So while calling people out in public, we must be careful not to let them down. Now, while delivering a personal prophecies, especially in a congregation that is led by another pastor, it is uh, important for us to be careful 
in the manner in which we deliver the word. So you know, we may speak to uh, a, a person and release a word about their lives. Now, if that's a word of uh, correction, or if that's a word that has to do with a very big change in the person's life, it is critical to keep the pastor informed, even in the case when uh, there is a need for some sort of a counseling. The pastor needs to know and the pastor needs to take charge. And uh, so, you know, we must uh, be connected to the pastor as a traveling or a vi visiting minister and uh, uh, keep them informed so that they can follow up and they can take care of their people even after we have uh, left we leave the place and so this is uh, what we also call as ministry etiquette that must be followed everywhere we go to minister to keep the pastor in loop and uh, regard the leadership of the pastor over the church now when it comes to ministering to political leaders a couple of things that we must bear in mind is to keep our motivation right we uh, mustn't engage in flattering political leaders because we know that they uh, carry a high place of authority, influence, and power. And uh, if our heart is not right, we may want to uh, gain advantage from that. And so, you know, giving them a nice word of prophecy about how God is going to bless them, be gracious to them. These are all uh things that we must stay away from uh, apart from this to not compromise the truth of god's word sometimes we may receive a word um, that may not be pleasant to the hearer uh, but still we must stay with the word that the lord is revealing to us and have the courage to minister it now if it is a, a word of let's say um, a, a revelation of sin or some such information that God is giving us, um, we must recognize that, uh, uh, you know, we, we can have the wisdom of God uh, in order to minister that word. Now, David and um, uh, Nathan are a classic example we see how nathan brought out the word of david's sin in second samuel chapter 12 verses 1 through 9 and uh, that's something for us to bear in mind and just because god uses us with political leaders we must be careful not to seek favors from them now let's go, move on to chapter 13 here. Uh, please give me a moment. I'm just going to pause for a little bit. Yes, thank you. Uh, we go on to chapter 13 here, which talks about the power of prophetic teams. When we consider the manner in which um, ministers functioned in the early church, they had teams uh, and they worked together. Uh, even in the church of Antioch, we observed that there was a team of prophets that, uh, you know, minister to the people. And uh, so it is a good thing for us to work together with other believers to release the prophetic flow. We see Paul writing about the order of uh, ministering prophetically in the setting of a team uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verses 29 to 31, where Paul says, let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge. But if anything is revealed to another who sits by, let the first keep silent, for you can all prophesy one by one, that all may learn and all may be encouraged. So we know that in the early church, uh, people were prophesying together and Paul had to uh, tell them to do this in an orderly fashion, to even take turns 
to minister and when there is a prophetic word that a particular person is uh, sharing for the others to sit by and listen to it now what is the advantage of ministering in a team setting um, there are a few the first one being that there can be double confirmations so when one person speaks a word and uh, you know a, another person seconds it it's uh, very encouraging to know that that is what the lord is speaking uh, so the lord is speaking the same message and it's a powerful confirmation the second one is that the message can come in as pieces of a puzzle and become clearer to the listener. So, you know, God um, reveals uh, so much more truth through a team rather than one single person. And while ministering in a group, it is easy for us to stay stirred up in the anointing because, you know, we are encouraging each other and we are believing together and there is faith for the flow of the prophetic anointing. So that is something for us to uh, really benefit from checks and balances, which simply means that um, if there is a person who goes into error, there will be others around them who can quickly point it out and uh, you know that will prevent mistakes from happening now in a corporate um, setting uh, let's say uh, a church setting there when there is a leadership that is training people to flow in the prophetic anointing uh, we can also see something that is known as corporate covering uh, which which simply means uh, you know, something like a safe environment uh, provided in that particular uh, congregation or a safe atmosphere where people can prophesy, where they can be trained, equipped, uh, and, uh, you know, even if there are uh, errors that happen, you know, those errors can be corrected and when people are flowing together and they have been grounded in the doctrine and the truth of God's word, we see that uh, it's also safety um, against demonic spirits or deceiving spirits, doctrines of demons, and the the uh, you know the prophetic group, the prophetic team can function um, very genuinely, releasing the prophetic word of God. So uh, that is also helpful so what are all the kinds of prophetic teams that uh, one can be a part of and minister through prophetic prayer teams um, that if we have spoken about where people can engage in prophetic intercession uh, they can pray aligned to what the spirit of the lord is revealing to them prophetic evangelism teams where people can uh, reach out to uh, those who don't know Christ. And, you know, as they receive a word for these people, their hearts are turned towards the Lord. So in this manner, you know, evangelistic teams can step out and uh, uh, be a blessing to uh, the unbelievers. Prophetic worship teams, we've spoken a lot about worship and we know that we the those who are leading in worship, uh, who are ministering with the help of instruments, can uh, hear from the Lord uh, in terms of the song or even the music and then go ahead and release it. And that becomes a blessing for the people. There can be prophetic creative teams. Creativity, um, uh, you know, it, it's it's a very broad uh, area we know there are many forms of expressions and uh, all these forms can be a prophetic uh, and we hear from the lord and release that word in a certain uh, you know creative way whether it be art or whether it be um, uh, dance uh, drama uh, or or you know something else and the prophetic marketplace teams where People engage in the workplace, in the business um, situations, and uh, they bring a word from the Lord. Maybe um, come up with a creative, um, a creative solution for a problem, or come up with an innovation that resolves uh, some sort of, uh, you know, economic. Uh, issues, economic crisis, and all of that is possible when. Uh, 
are the people who are in the marketplace also are prophetic and they work together as a team uh, and lastly there can be prophetic city transformation teams which tune into the heart of god to receive strategies for the transformation of the city and in this way several teams can function and be a blessing to the body of christ and the city at large uh, we will now transition to chapter 14 which talks about the prophetic church. Um, what is the prophetic church? Well, it's a church where the leader and the people are passionate about growing in the prophetic. So, uh, you know, from hearing, just, you know, hearing, managing to hear from the Lord, um, they, they commit to continually hearing from the Lord. And this is not just about prophesying, but it's about uh, a, an intimate walk with the Lord. It's about committing to a prayer life. It's about um, committing to holiness. So there is so much more that becomes a part of being a prophetic church. The reason why one should... Uh, church should be a prophetic church is because God is speaking in the now. Um, there have been amazing words released in the past and those can be spoken to the congregation even today. But we have a speaking God and he keeps speaking at all times and we must become a hearing people hear the word of God in the now and release it to the people. And that is why, you know, it's important for us to be prophetic and the church to be prophetic today to hear the voice of the Lord. But when it comes to becoming a prophetic church, a congregation becoming a prophetic church, uh, it may not be all that easy because um, as we, uh, uh, you know, discussed once receiving prophecy as a, a gift of the holy spirit manifestation of this gift and practicing this uh, um, gift it, it, it may not be comfortable for everyone so initially there could be resistance from those who have had a bad experience in the past or who've heard certain stories that were disturbing or have heard of the abuses of the prophetic and so one may face resistance but once we go past this once we establish a good foundation a scriptural foundation it's a lot easier for people to function uh, in the prophetic and for a church to grow in the prophetic what can be some of the pitfalls um you know pitfalls can be that just because there is this drive or this um uh, guidance to flow more in the prophetic people may start um, you know, prophesying without even hearing from the Lord or uh, because they feel pressure of some sort or, you know, people may uh, just think that hearing and saying nice things to each other is what prophecy is all about without even testing it. Uh, and, and so there might, might be a lack of wisdom uh, in ministering the prophetic which is something the pastor would need to look into and help the people do this right uh, there can also uh, you know be uh, a focus on prophesying to a large extent without a, a good emphasis on the lifestyle of someone who is pursuing uh, you know a, a, an intimate walk with the lord and so you know, these are these are areas where um, teaching comes in equipping and training um, and leading the people comes in so the results of becoming a prophetic church uh, needless to say there are many uh, we glorify God, we see the flow of His Spirit, we see um, that the lives of individuals are blessed, they are transformed. There will be much growth, much advancement uh, in the right direction and a powerful impact for the extension of God's kingdom. So while we talk about the prophetic congregation and the church, um, we know that Pastoring this congregation is a is an important task. So, 
what does that look like you know pastoring a prophetic congregation well uh, it will be a tough thing to do uh, especially because we said people can get enthusiastic about uh, prophesying and end up making mistakes they may be good and sincere people but they may not be hearing accurately from the lord and uh, so you know uh, we as someone who's leading a congregation of this kind there they oh, the pastor needs god's wisdom to address and bring in correction and encouragement to the people <laughs> we may also see that uh, some folk who are uh, uh, flowing or beginning to flow in the prophetic may become so um uh, you know they, they may become really happy and uh, uh, we may see them doing doing a lot of this with the wrong motivation and that is to gain recognition because when there is a manifestation of the gifts of the spirit you know somewhere uh, people uh, want to gain some fame from that and so we may have people in the congregation prophesying for recognition and you know even in such situations the pastor will have to come and guide them in the right manner and so these are some of the challenges well challenges will be there and uh, um, you know if we don't want challenges that means we we uh, shouldn't be doing the work of of growing people as a prophetic congregation but then you know we can't stop the work just because there are problems we find a passage from proverbs 14 and verse 4 which says where no oxen are the trough is clean but much increase comes by the strength of an ox so scriptures are telling us that when the ox are working that place is going to be messy and just to clean that place out we can't stop the oxen from working and similarly we cannot stop the work of god but just prepare ourselves to deal with what comes along with preparing the congregation to be a prophetic congregation uh, and as far as the pastor is concerned uh, it's important for the pastor also to uh, hear from the lord and uh, hear uh, more accurately as time goes by and uh, grow stronger in the lord because you know, people want to hear from the lord and uh, they need to know that their pastor is uh, growing and the pastor is receiving a now word from the Lord in order to uh, bring a word which is a word in season, a word to challenge them, a word to refresh them, motivate them, correct them and so on. And so a pastor uh, can become a prophet pastor uh, uh, as he's hearing better from the lord but we know that it's not just about prophesying it's about uh, an intimate walk with the lord it's about Christ growing in maturity and christ likeness as well so that is about a prophetic pastor so another uh, quick word there is that while uh, we are encouraging congregations to be prophetic it's important to not get stuck in just a style you know uh, or and uh, uh, say that okay this is what prophecy is about this is how it should be done and every other church should do it uh, instead go with what the lord is leading so it's not a, not even about getting stuck in a style and again it's not about um uh, when the congregation begins to grow in the prophetic to say that now we've got it and uh, the other churches don't and so looking down upon uh, other groups of people other groups of believers uh, that's again something that one must steer away from uh, let's move on to chapter 15 here which uh, is talking about women as prophetic ministers uh, we know god pours out the spirit of uh, uh, his spirit on all flesh both men and women the question is can women prophesy uh, and another important question is if women can be prophetesses or they can be in the office of a prophet in the old testament things are quite clear because we see that uh, there are women such as miriam deborah 
uh, Halda, who are called as prophetesses. So the Bible makes it clear that they were in the office of the prophet. Coming to the New Testament, there is uh, a, a lady by the name Anna, who is called a prophetess in Luke chapter 2. And uh, so you know, there again, we are clear that a scripture did call someone a prophetess. Uh, now, in the early church, there were the daughters of Philip who prophesied. Uh, and uh, Therefore, you know, we, are, we know that God has poured out his spirit on both men and women. And in Acts chapter 2, verses 17 and 18, that's very, very clear that both men and women can prophesy. Now, the second question, can women be in the office of a prophet? Uh, when we look at um, Ephesians chapter 4, where we read about the Lord Jesus giving gifts to men uh, where the fivefold ministry offices will be spoken of um, uh, you know after verse 8 we see that that statement he gave gifts to men Ephesians 4 and verse 8 the word men there in the Greek is a gender gender neutral word called anthropos and uh, this word anthropos can be applied you know, as we said, gender neutral, when he gave gifts to men, means uh, men and women. So, you know, the anointing and the grace of God is delivered to both men and women. And uh, thereby, you know, we understand that even uh, women can be graced uh, and they can be in the position of prophetesses or in the office of a prophet we now look at chapter 16 in our notes that speaks of practical issues concerning the prophetic ministry now we've understood that the prophetic ministry is so beautiful uh, the lord is working through the gift of prophecy in the church uh, today and uh, we can learn and develop ourselves uh, in this gift and be a blessing to the people. However, uh, in the church, unfortunately, uh, for all the genuine things that God is doing, we find that uh, there can be, uh, uh, you know, some counterfeit. Uh, they or they can be abuses of the uh, the genuine and good that God is pouring out. So we have seen and heard uh, stories of people who are self-styled uh, prophets. Um, and uh, sometimes we see that the, the phrase, thus says the Lord, is used uh, a little too much when uh, people are prophesying. And, uh, you know, many times there is a, a lot of guesswork and the prophecies are released without wisdom and it ends up hurting people it ends up uh, um, you know bringing their morale down so uh, having seen these things happen you know, what is it that you and i or we can uh, look into and be careful about to never you know, get into uh, such uh, scenarios so a few pointers there the first one is um we must not prophesy for money or for gain. And we have spoken about it earlier. There's the example of Balaam, who was so unwilling and so rigid that uh, God even had to speak to him through a donkey. Uh, you know, that he was not willing to listen to God that a donkey had to speak to him. Uh, and the other example is that of Gehazi, who was with Elisha and uh, you know even Gehazi uh, tried to make a profit after Naaman's healing uh, and uh, God was not for that and so making a gain through the gift uh, that's not right the next pointer is that we shouldn't play to people's expectations now people would expect a certain man or a woman to 
release a powerful word now what if god does not give us a word in that moment uh, it, we should not be afraid to uh, just speak the word that god is giving us right uh, or stay silent if you're not hearing anything from the lord but when we fall into the trap of you know pleasing people and and making up something that is not right and so that is another thing to be careful about or something to avoid now abusing something known as the prophet's reward we see a scripture in matthew chapter 10 and verse 41 that says he who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward now based on this one passage that have been abuses in the church where people are asked to uh, to reward uh, a prophet uh, you know to give to the prophet and if they don't then you know uh, they will not receive from god uh, however that is simply not true um it it is an abuse so while yes the statement does say that one must bless the prophet it's not to take the statement to make people give because there have been things that have happened in the christian world where people have uh, said things like um, uh, you know uh, unless you give a thousand rupees or unless you give so many dollars you know you will not receive the prophet's reward uh, and so you know those things really uh, are not from god now moving on thus says the lord you know that phrase using it very often to get the attention of people uh, is not necessary we've discussed this uh, quite elaborately earlier um, and you know there are times when prophetic words are spoken when no one uses the phrase thus says the lord and even then the prophetic word ends up uh, meeting its target and making a difference in the lives of the people so uh, a prophet a genuine prophetic word doesn't need uh, to be stated as thus says the lord it will still impact powerfully uh, just because it is a genuine word from the heart of god and so you now this thus says the lord must be used uh, in a very uh, wise manner death and doom prophecies uh, well this is a section in our notes on page 242 and uh, what it simply says is that sometimes there are people who bring or prophets who bring warnings and announce judgments and uh, uh, while it's true god does uh, work through prophets to release such messages uh, if a prophet is constantly um, providing uh, critical judgmental uh, prophetic words uh, apart it it may be you know something to do with the the inner issues of the prophet itself rather than god bringing judgmental words every time and um, so one must be careful you know if if constantly there, there are words of judgment and constantly there are you know words of destruction that are being spoken um, you know words of prophecy like you're going to uh, uh, this is from an example in our in our notes where we you know one person was said told that they would uh, uh, pass away on such and such a date now can you imagine how much of fear that can bring to a person uh, so even if that prophetic word were not true just the fear of hearing something like this can um, cause a lot of emotional damage mental damage to a person and so you know we need to be cautious about such uh, prophetic words and uh, be careful when we hear things like this we don't really have to give into it uh, and then there is a section that speaks of weird and pathetic prophecies which uh, simply means that there are there have been times where uh, so-called prophets have taken advantage of uh, simple or gullible believers and uh, have have also uh, maybe in a, in a very uh, dramatic way with some antics um, released prophetic words and said you know 
things that really uh, don't benefit the people. Um, maybe, you know, go to someone's home and, and say uh, that, okay, I know that there is a demon in, in this wall or something like that. Well, uh, while a person is pointing these things out, how are they really helping the believers come out of that bondage is the question that one must ask. So whenever we observe uh, uh, people who are speaking such words which ends up being more of uh, you know like more theatrical and more entertaining than actually uh, uh, being a blessing to the people or delivering people uh, by the power of god uh, then you know we we really don't have to worry about or receive uh, such uh, prophecies then uh, a section here talks about uh, you know making people seek a word through the prophet. So uh, when we speak about prophecy and the advantages of prophecy, what happens is that people become very dependent uh, on a prophet releasing a prophetic word uh, if they are not uh, trained well and accurately from scripture. So then uh, people start start going to conferences and uh, you know seminars and are ready to spend huge uh, a huge sum of money just to meet a prophet so that they can hear a word from the lord but we as new testament believers know that the holy spirit dwells in every believer and he leads every believer so uh, a prophetic word or excuse me a word from a prophet is actually a bonus and uh, we must not go running after these things and uh, that is something for us to keep in mind and to never uh, put people in that place and make them dependent uh, to hear a word from a prophet alone and finally uh, to remember that though we have asked Though we have spoken about being cautious of, uh, you know, certain issues um, as far as the prophetic is concerned, we must surely ride the wave of the prophetic. Revelation 19 and the latter part of verse 10, it says, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Now, the same scripture um, in the Amplified Bible Classic Edition renders, that version renders it this way, for the substance of the truth revealed by Jesus is the spirit of all prophecy. So what we recognize is that all true prophecy is birthed by the truth that the Lord Jesus himself reveals or testifies or communicates by his spirit and uh, therefore we want to encourage this and become a prophetic people we want to hear the voice of god and speak what the word of the lord is to the people let's now look at chapter 17 here um, in our notes which is about the making of a prophet uh, so very similar to what we learned with regard to the making of an apostle, God takes every person with a call uh, through a time of preparation and training. And God uh, works certain things not just in terms of the gift that a person carries, but also in their character. Uh, and when it comes to a prophet, you know, uh, we do know that God puts them through a season of isolation. Um, and why does he do that? Because, you know, when one is in that place of uh, obscurity, and uh, when no one really recognizes uh, us as individuals, we we know that you know we must depend on the Lord. We must learn to trust the Lord. And so that season of obscurity is all about that. Uh, and, and you know, uh, it it can it, it can look different to different people. The wilderness season, but these are all seasons through which God will enable us to grow. 
up in him and uh, develop a godly character so establishing a godly character is so very necessary uh, as as far as the prophetic office is concerned um and you know any any other office or uh, even as a believer because the right character is the right wine skin uh, into which god wants to pour out the wine the true wine um and uh, that is his spirit the work of his spirit so the work of his spirit can only be sustained when we carry the right character and uh, so when we cleanse ourselves the bible teaches us excuse me that we can be vessels of honor ready for every good work in second timothy chapter 2 and verse 21 so god takes his time to shape us prepare us uh, and help us develop that godly character and in the making of a prophet we also understand that one would need a strong faith and so the stretching of the limits of our um, faith is another thing that we may go through because god is preparing us to to carry that kind of faith to do the work that he's calling us to do uh, and then again you know we know that he will help us to be positioned uh, in in a place where we can fulfill the purpose of god for our lives and uh, god does this in many ways you now he gives us the right place to be a part of connects us with the right people to guide us lead us encourage us correct us uh, and so in this way you know we are able to fulfill the purpose of god and when we talk about the rising up of a prophet let's remember that it is um, also going to have its set of challenges um, we've seen that people opposed jesus people opposed the anointing that jesus carried and similarly uh, we might see that the pro the prophet faces opposition but uh, it's all uh, in the game if if you want to put it that way uh, this is a part and parcel of the developing of a prophet and so one must not be discouraged but one must continue and trust god to fulfill the call that god has for them as a prophet uh, and so with this we conclude we have uh, gone over the highlights of all the chapters in our book understanding the prophetic uh, which is the key APC publication or the main APC publication that we have used for our study uh, with regard to prophetic ministry and i trust that uh, this course has been a blessing and uh, beyond just gaining information that we also have uh, you know practical knowledge and uh, that we uh, will flow in this gift empowered by the holy spirit and be a blessing to the church where the lord has planted us uh, and you know uh, to also impact uh, the world so uh, thank you so much for being a part of the course i'm just going to uh, wrap up this session with a word of prayer heavenly father we thank and praise you for giving us the grace and the strength lord to go through um, the study on the prophetic ministry as well as the apostolic ministry and father we pray that um, lord you will release the prophetic in a powerful and a mighty way lord through each one of us lord let every hindrance to the work of the spirit of god be uprooted in our lives in the name of jesus and father we pray god that we will hear from you that we will grow in our hearing from you and uh, lord that uh, uh, each one of us so oh god will will um, 
uh, Lord, walk and fulfill the purpose that you have for us. Thank you, God. Thank you for this incredible opportunity. We thank you for your word in our lives, God. We bless you. We honor you. We worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So thank you once again, everyone. I truly appreciate uh, you. Uh, and look forward to seeing you in the third year courses. All the best for the assignments. God bless you. Bye for now.